We got to start with the NFL and we ain't talking about free agency. We got to start with the biggest news of the week. Unfortunately, this thing has continued to snowball and we're talking about Deshaun Watson. For those that don't know, earlier this week, he was accused of sexual misconduct by three women. And then it started to snowball. And now as we record this um, on Saturday, March 20th, it's up to 12 women where they send possibly even as much as 22 women who are alleging to come forward with some sort of sexual misconduct by Deshaun Watson. Uh, in some cases, there's a woman who's claiming she was forced to perform oral sex on him. Other women claim there was inappropriate touching and, and inappropriate uh, situations they were placed in by Deshaun Watson. The story's all over the place, bro. And I know we're still waiting for all the details to come out, but as we stand today, what were your thoughts originally when we heard about this report to where we're at at this time? Uh, all right, so originally I was a little bit more on the Deshaun Watson side, just cause I felt like, all right, man, I think this is some BS. They trying to break down another black superstar. Um, you know, he wanted out of out of Houston and now all of a sudden all of this stuff just starts to to come out. And like you said, snowball effect um, now, just because of the number of women that we're at, I'm 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 in the middle. I'm still in the middle. I'm still going. I'm not I'm not I'm not, you know, placing judgment nowhere yet, because I don't think we have nowhere near enough information in the situation. And I also feel like there are some outlining circumstances um that are going on with this whole situation right now so i'm still in the middle right now um you know we 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 gotta stick with the innocent until proven guilty um that's what this you know one of the the, the bases that this you know the principles this country was based on right so we have to give deshaun watson the benefit of the doubt in this situation um, I know there was like text messages that they said they had and whatnot, but even even with that stuff, um, you know, in the text messages, you know, if, if the one I saw was like accurate, it's not like, it, you know, there's a, an apology text from Deshaun Watson, but it doesn't specify what he's apologizing for, you know, so there's different stipulations than the, you know, the, 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 the issue with the lawyer who just so happened to be the neighbor of the, well, I guess technically the previous owner because it was uh, it was Bob McNair, who's the father. He's, so he doesn't, technically he doesn't own the team anymore, but I still feel like there's a little, you know, bit of, uh, you know, something there that we haven't been privy to just yet. I, I understand that the Texans put out a statement saying that when the lawsuits were brought public, that was the first time that they had ever heard about that. However, in my heart, I feel like there's no way that if me and Eric is boys and Eric has a business and the number one asset in that business is about to this, this whole thing is just about to go crazy. I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna not hit up Eric and be like, yo, Eric, your man is out here wilding. You might need to get ahead of this thing. So I, you know, from that standpoint, I'm just like, you know, I'm a little bit iffy on that because I feel like if this thing is true, I feel like the 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 owners knew about it already um, just because, you know, and then, you know, I'm reading articles from, you know, the 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 the, the police department in Houston tweeted a statement after uh, Busby said that he had spoken to them and they put out a statement on Twitter saying that they never spoke to him that anything and regarding criminal charges or anything like that or just period, they haven't spoken to him. So there's a lot of things, a lot of moving parts that's going on here, which is why I'm still in the middle. I'm not throwing Deshaun Watson under the bus. I'm also not saying that, you know, these women are, are lying or anything like that. I need more information before I can make a, a serious, you know, summation of, of, of everything that's going on. Yeah, so I agree. I think that there's so many moving parts that we've got to give this thing time to see what all the facts are, first and foremost. And as you said, innocent until proven guilty, he's uh, at the very least should get his due process before we, we come down and, you know, give our ultimate ruling on how we feel about the situation. Now, in no way, shape or form do we condone sexual misconduct or, or rape culture, anything like that. We've always stood firm on what we believe that to be. And like I always said, to me, that's a sucker move if you force yourself upon women and, and try to take advantage of women. 
the, the text messages to me are interesting and the number of women at this point becomes very interesting because as I always say, where there's smoke, there's fire. And as much as I want this thing to work out well for Deshaun Watson, it's a young black man in America. We understand young black men don't get very many opportunities in this country. And when they do, they damn sure don't get second opportunities, right? If you mess up the first one. Yes. So from that standpoint, I want this to work out well for him. However, I am conflicted because again, with the number of women and now these text messages, until we get to see the text messages and until we get proper context as to what messages are being sent, it's, it's really tough to tell what's gonna happen right now. And it's really tough not to think some of this could be true. You know, I, from what I've read, I have not seen the text messages directly, but from what I've read in one of those messages, he apologizes to one of the women by saying, I apologize for putting you in an uncomfortable situation. Now, as you said, that could mean a number of things. They, they may have, she may have been invited to his residence or a place to give him a massage and maybe one of his boys was inappropriate and now he's apologizing for his boy. Um, you know, it, it could be a number of things, but it doesn't look good when you send a text message apologizing. Yes. You know, at the end of the day, yes, I'm a married man now, but at one time I was single. You are a single man. You know, there are times you're around women. There, I can't think of a time I ever had to send a message to a woman afterwards and say, I apologize for putting you in an uncomfortable situation. Yeah. And, right. <laughs> I, I can't think of a time I've had to send that message. So I had to apologize for one of my boys doing, you know what I mean? Like, right. Yeah. You know, with your friends, like it just hasn't gotten to that point, but you know, and, and again, apologizing, we, that's, that's the thing. We don't know. Cause it could have been Correct. a situation where I'm just apologizing because shoot, because you had to come here and your car got towed. Anything could be possible. Right. We, we don't, again, we don't know the, the full scale, the context of, of the text. So I don't want to chastise and criticize them based off the text messages. We need more information. Yes. But I do think that the Texans organization knew this was coming. And here's why. Um, as you mentioned, the lawyer was neighbors to the, to the McNair family. I'm not sure if it was Bob directly or another family member. It was Bob. He lived right next door to Bob. Okay. And, and even still in that situation, that does not mean they were buddy, buddy. They may have just been neighbors in passing. You know, you see each other. Hey, it's a wealthy neighborhood. How, how's he doing? Hey, he's a lawyer. I'm an owner. Maybe we speak every now and then, but maybe we don't have much of a relationship. But the reason I think the Texans knew and to keep it purely sport and not speculate and try to turn this into a conspiracy is the Texans behavior to me, even before this news broke, was very odd. You and I both have said, why wouldn't you be fielding calls for, for Deshaun Watson if he wants out? Why wouldn't you at least hear what other teams are offering? You don't have a first round pick this year. You don't have a first round pick next year. You don't have the cap space to upgrade this talent. So if your best player wants out, it is your job as a front office to at least listen to offers and then make a judgment off those offers. I mean, the Seahawks don't want to move on from Russell Wilson, but they still listen to offers, right? Now, whether they decide to take the offer or not is their business. And I say that to say this, the fact that they were not even fielding offers and we're not speaking to Deshaun Watson. To me, they knew this news was coming at some point, And this was the big joker. This was their ace in the hole. They knew if you're not going to pick up the phone for us when you want to request a trade, no problem. But when this news breaks, I guarantee you, you're going to want to speak with us. And we're going to try to hash this thing out because it's in, it's in his best interest to have the organization stand side by side with him and help him through this process. In no way, shape or form does he want to come out of this looking like a creep or some sort of scumbag. And the best way to do that is to have the wealthy influence of ownership in the front office who are going to put their arm around your shoulder and say, nope, this is our guy. We know him to always be an upstanding citizen. And this doesn't sound like the Deshaun Watson that we know and we've grown to love. And ultimately, they're hoping this situation entices him to stick around in Houston for another year or two before they figure out what the long term solution is there. But they knew this news was coming. I don't think they created the situation. I don't think they conspired with the lawyer to now make him look bad. I just think they had that ace in the hole. They had that big joker in their hand and they knew when this news breaks, he's not going to want to get traded anymore. He's going to be willing to listen to us. No, I, I agree. Absolutely. Um, now I do. I, I want to play a little bit of devil's advocate here. Uh, you know, with the, with the, all of these women that have come forward and the, and the attorney, because when we first got the got the the gist of everything that was going on, when it was just the the, the first girl, it was from an incident that happened, supposed, uh, allegedly happened in December of 2020. So the issue that I have is why is it as an attorney 
And, you know, why is it your first notion to not seek justice for these women? Why is it your first notion to try to get a check out of Deshaun Watson? So that's why I have an issue with this situation. And I'm not saying, I'm not speaking on who's right, who did what, who didn't do what. I'm just saying from the standpoint of, especially in this situation where we're talking about something that stemmed from December of 2020. I don't know at what point she got with the lawyer or what, you know, what stage this happened, but I just feel like if there's a situation and I'm a lawyer, I'm going to be encouraging you to seek justice. And by seeking justice, I mean reporting this to the, the Houston Police Department. The first thing on my mind is not going to be to say, all right, let's go try to get a settlement out of Deshaun Watson. That's that's the only thing that I really have a problem with in this situation, just because we have seen far too many instances where women try to extort these celebrity men. And, and we've got to be listen, we got to be honest, brothers, we, we out here, you know, we we move, we 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 not moving smart. OK, because you really need to be screening and vetting the people that you bring into your circle, no matter what shape or form the relationship is that you have with an individual person. And that's not even just women. That's that goes for, you know, what business relationships you have with men, women, whatever, whether it be personal, sexual, whatever it is, we really have to do a better vetting process with the people that you bring into your circle. You know, and I think that Deshaun Watson is going to, if this situation is able to be worked out, if, you know, if he's, if it comes out that he's not, you know, he hasn't done everything that they're saying he's done, I would hope that moving forward, he would understand that and he would, in his, in, in his selective process would, would be a thousand percent improved because these things do happen. Yeah. And I mean, I think that's why I was skeptical when I first heard the, the reports, because as you said, it's like, why, why are you going strictly or directly to civil court as opposed to seeking justice? Um, but then as I've read more about it and, and got a deeper understanding of, of the some of these allegations, I think one, the lawyer viewed it as, in some of these cases, there was no sexual contact that took place. There were suggestions, there were you know a pushy nature by Deshaun, but because there was no intercourse and there's no way to, to really prove anything other than the conversation happened, it becomes very tough to bring up those charges because then it becomes a he said, she said. He'll say, nah, that conversation never happened. She'll say, no, he, you know, he tried to touch me or he tried to make me touch him. And then it becomes a he said, she said, and then you can't prosecute it. But in civil suit, it becomes a lot easier to kind of prove it because all any of these women would need is that text message showing, look, there was inappropriate, um, you know, conduct on his end or there was an inappropriate touch on his end. And so therefore it becomes easy. And I think that's why they went that way. Um, I agree with you, unfortunately, for, for some of these women that have these allegations, I don't think all of them are telling the truth. I, I think, you know, again, 22 women sounds a little crazy to me, but I, we can't also dismiss them and make it seem like all of them are lying either. I think there's some truth there. The, the difficulty is finding out where the truth is and where the lies are and then trying to separate the two. And like you said, for those that are telling the truth, it's unfortunate because yeah. they should be able to get justice without having to worry about people questioning, you know, their validity and, and if they're telling the truth at all. So I think that's why they decided to go civil. And, you know, it's, it's an ugly situation. Deshaun Watson is very young, man. He's 26 yeah. years old. This, this thing has a lot of layers to it. And like, like we started off the conversation by saying we need more details because his livelihood could be at stake here. You know, let's not forget, you know, the NFL, the way it's structured, the way contracts are structured. If this thing goes really bad for him, the Texans probably have the loopholes already in place to walk away from that deal. Yep. And as we said, a lot of times the, the black quarterback does not get multiple chances to redeem himself. Yes. You know, we, we've seen it with other, other players. Sometimes it isn't the quarterback but they struggle to find their way. And unfortunately in a league that is very unforgiving at 26 years old, we could see the, the, the beginning of the end for his career if it doesn't go well. Yeah, and, and, and it sucks because, you know, either way, no matter how this thing turns out, even if it's, it comes out that none of this is true, he's still gonna have that stain on his image. 
and he's still gonna be it's still gonna be hard to, to get past that because we once again we all know that the media coverage that you get when you are accused of something and the media coverage that you get when you are cleared of something never balance out it just it, just, it does not happen it's always this big blown up thing and then when it comes out that you didn't do it then you get pushed back to the to the middle of the newspaper where you know it don't really show like that but we don't get this whole big media frenzy when you know when when it when it when it turns out the other way i don't know how it's going to turn out in this situation um i you know i would i really hope for deshaun watson's sake that this thing is not true uh you know once i started seeing the numbers going up i immediately started thinking about bill cosby and that situation because i feel like that probably is you know closer not that close because i because these women were accusing bill of drugging him obviously but as far as the numbers and the amount of women that continue to come forward i started thinking about bill cosby um you know and and again this is that this is this, this young man's career obviously if he did it you got to face whatever comes along with that territory um but I really just hope because it's not like, you know, this is a situation where this is like an Antonio Brown where we've seen repeated things going on. You know what I mean? Like, well, one of those guys where we have seen repeated stuff that would lead me to be like, push me on the other side to say, you know what? Oh, he might have done this. But Deshaun Watson, we haven't heard anything like I haven't. I don't know if you have, but I haven't heard any any really negative you know stories about Deshaun Watson. So I feel like this kind of came out of nowhere. Um, which is why I was, you know, leaning towards the other side. And I understand I do. I, I want to give the women the benefit of the doubt because you should never be afraid to speak your truth. Um, but I also understand that, you know, these things do happen. We, you know what I mean? We we saw we saw Pac had to go to jail for 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 assault that he didn't even, you know, <laughs> partake in. So we know that these things happen. So, you know, again, we're going we're gonna to have to wait and see with this one. Um, you know, as you guys, as more information comes into us, we will get it out to you guys. Um, I just, I just, I just wish for a, a positive outcome to this situation. Absolutely, like I said, we we've got to take a wait and see approach ultimately and see how it plays out. But I'm gonna focus. This is your African King's coming, Michael Blackson. You watching real friends do a talk? Get real with it, my son.